Most of us see insects as pests, but these ones could actually save your life. In a new study, researchers were able to train ants to smell cancer. Now, so far, the ants have only detected cancer in mice, but the hope here is that they could be used as a low-cost me method to de detect the disease in humans. So joining us this morning is CTV science and technology specialist, Dan Riskin. This is fascinating, Dan. How did the experiment work? I, I love this too. Ba basically what they did is they took an animal that has a really, really good sense of smell, ants, which are also pretty easy to come by, pretty easy to keep in a, a container and, and things like that. And they trained these ants to recognize what are called volatile organic compounds, VOCs. The thing about cancer is, the earlier you detect it, the better, but often cancer is deep within your body and it's hard to detect. So what they did is they took mice with cancer and the smell of their urine is going to be different from the smell of normal mice urine. And so they trained ants to recognize the urine of, of mice that have cancer. And then they, once they trained them, they gave these ants these trials where they gave them some urine samples. They said, try to figure out which one, talking to the ants now, try to figure <laughs> out which one has cancer. And the ants would spend more time on the droplet of urine that uh, had the cancer. And so they effectively turned them into a cancer detector, which is extremely effective and extremely cheap. And it's pretty exciting. We, we you and I have had this discussion before about other animals that have proven in studies they can sniff out cancer. I'm thinking about dogs. But what right. makes ants a more appealing option, according to the researchers? Well, so one thing is that if this is weird, but they're actually in some ways it's easier to train them because once these ants are trained on this task, they'll do it over and over and over without getting a reward. Like they they did it nine times in a row without a reward. And with a dog, you've got to keep keep sort of keep them trained on what the job is. And also, like a dog is, you know, it can only do so much. If there's only one dog. The idea with the ants is. Okay, you know, it takes a long time to train one ant, but ants are these social insects and they haven't gotten to this stage yet, but the hope is that you could train a few ants which would then go back and train the rest of the colony. They could teach each other what the good smell is. If they had a reward system for this, if they got food when they went and searched for it, they would teach one another to look for this particular thing. So you could potentially have a whole colony that's training itself and then you could take buckets of ants from that colony to whatever lab you want and have them work for you and the colony would continually produce new ants. It'd be very inexpensive, it would work in all parts of the world. It's an exciting idea um, and this is the first step down that road. Who knew ants are more trainable than dogs? Detecting, right? Detecting cancer in mice is one thing, but the study is also warning that it can be difficult for them to replicate these results in humans. I'm guessing part of it's because cancer is deep within human body, and this trial was done on urine samples outside the body. Right, exactly. So, so you would need to get urine samples from whoever the patient was. Different cancers are going to have different smells. So this, you know, for the purpose of setting up their study, they had a very specific strain of cancer, uh, which they knew very well. They were able to measure the different kinds of smells that come from that kind of cancer. But the thing is, I mean, I do find this quite interesting because when people get cancer in the early stages, that cancer is producing a whole bunch of chemicals that we're not looking for right now, mm -hmm. right? We use other techniques as ways of trying to detect cancer. We do, you know, breast scans, things like that. Whereas the smell of a person's urine might give away clues very early. And so so if you had a massive through output situation where you could be testing a lot of different people's urine, uh, you know, very inex inexpensively, uh, it'd be a really easy way to detect cancers much earlier at a much lower cost. Early detection. That is a fascinating, fascinating field. So we know it's a long way off, but could we see doctors using insects like ants if all goes well in the human trials? What does this mean? Yeah, I mean, the researchers are pretty upfront that this isn't like a huge breakthrough that's probably going to change hospitals in the next decade, but it's a start down the road. I think for this to really turn the corner, and this is a big thing that they spend a lot of time talking about, they'd really need to be able to get those ants to train other ants, because right now it takes a lot of human time to train an individual ant, and then you're sort of invested in this one ant's life. And that, you know, that's not a very uh, effective payback in terms of time sunk. That person could spend that time looking at samples themselves, for mm. example, with a chemical analyzer. So um, if they can get the ants to train one another, then this could take off. It sort of becomes something that takes care of itself. But uh, we've got to watch this space carefully because it's exciting. And it's also a nice reminder that there's this huge diversity of wildlife out there, not just dogs, you know, not just rats, uh, different animals that have a great nose that can be working for us doing all kinds of jobs. You know, forget artificial intelligence AI. We could just have ant intelligence AI. <laughs> exactly. You don't even have to change the acronym. <laughs> thanks, Dan. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked this, be sure to subscribe here, or you can check out more Your Morning videos right here.